Welcome to Electrified, it's your host, Dylan Loomis. So first up today, CNBC uploaded a video, an interview with Joko Widodo, the president of Indonesia. Nothing that we don't already know. However, the interviewer did ask him about him inviting Elon to the G20 summit this coming November, and specifically if there could be an announcement made that Tesla plans to build a factory in Indonesia at that point. Of course, Joko could not confirm nor deny, said the process is still ongoing and the talks are continuing. However, this is probably the next date to watch as it would make sense for Elon and Tesla to make an announcement around that time. Earlier this year, Elon said we may hear of the next Gigafactory toward the end of this year, so could be something to watch. Just a quick note on this release from the White House, I think some people are taking it a bit too far. It says later this year, Tesla will begin production of new supercharger equipment that will enable non-Tesla EV drivers in North America to use Tesla superchargers. So this is talking about the production of that new equipment, not necessarily the installation of said equipment and operation. Now, yes, it's definitely possible that Tesla does start opening up select supercharger locations later this year to non-Tesla EVs. However, it's also possible that they just begin producing this equipment and don't actually open it up or roll it out until well into 2023. Just wanted to make that distinction. Many people today are very excited about this tweet today from Elon, maybe Tesla should make a highly configurable robo-van for people and cargo. Now, I don't want to burst anyone's bubble, I just want to be realistic with timelines and go back to Elon and Tesla's history with this robo-van. Before the rewind though, TOSV said definitely need something bigger than the X, is this possible? And Elon gave a wink. So back to July 2016, Elon says, some good guessing by Jalopnik. The Tesla minibus will be built on a Model X chassis. People density potential is surprisingly high. Eli said, minibus sounds boring. Try space bus or star bus or even outer bus. Elon said, not bad, I like those suggestions. The following day, Elon said the Tesla bus, minibus, or space bus will be built off the Model X. And remember, there's reference to this bus on Tesla's master plan part two that was released July of 2016. Elon said, it's inspired by some of the California custom VW design art. Here it is, master plan part two, high passenger density urban transport. Both referring to that and the heavy duty truck are in early stages of development at Tesla and should be ready for unveiling next year. Now, there was also an entire paragraph talking about buses in general and the need to transform that industry, specifically saying having a design to accommodate wheelchairs, strollers, and bikes. Then November 2018, Elon said, it may be interesting to work with Daimler or Mercedes on an electric sprint that's a great van we will inquire. And don't forget this, from Kim Java referencing Elon talking to Joe Rogan, Elon said, now a van because you got a big flat area, that's actually where solar could start to make a little more sense. And don't forget the San Bernardino County Supervisor Kurt Hagman was talking about a proposal from the Boring Company and he kind of let this slip saying originally, the proposal called for specially designed Tesla cars. But Hagman said the company is working with Tesla to develop electric vans that can seat up to 12 people and their luggage, enlarging the capacity to 1200 people per day or 10 million plus per year. And then in the fall of last year, Elon referenced the RoboVan at an all hands meeting and Sawyer tweeted that in the future, this would be to address people with disability. So my point here and the truth about the Tesla RoboVan, it's been in discussions in different forms for the last six years, really starting back in 2016, if not before. Now that said, do I think there will be a Tesla RoboVan in the future? Yes, absolutely. It makes too much sense not to. However, I don't want people to think this is going to happen next year or even anytime in the next two to three years. Remember, we are still limited by chips and eventually batteries. Those things need to be worked out. Not to mention next year, Tesla already has to deal with the semi, the Cybertruck, and hopefully the Roadster. And then we can't forget that Elon has talked about the robo taxi. So would the robo van replace the robo taxi that was supposed to be unveiled maybe in 2024? Or would these be two separate vehicles? Once again, a lot of questions. I just don't want people to think this is coming anytime soon. All right, guys, this sweepstakes is pretty wild. Omaze is bringing you the chance to win an unplugged performance custom Model S Plaid Apex Edition, and you'll support the Juju Foundation in the process. But wait until you hear these upgrades. 
Shout out to Omaze, the sponsor of today's video. Omaze gives you the chance to win once in a lifetime prizes, all while helping nonprofits make the world a better place. In 2021, Omaze gave over $27 million to 131 nonprofits, and over 6,000 people were Omaze winners. Just head to omaze.com slash electrified, linked below, to enter for your chance to win. We know the Model S Plaid gets 396 miles of range and is the fastest accelerating production car ever made. But listen to this. This comes with a carbon fiber body kit, carbon ceramic brakes, full self-driving, and the brand new Von Holzhausen bamboo leather interior and more. Taxes and shipping will be included for United States winners. The Juju Foundation was started by, yes, Juju Smith-Schuster of the Kansas City Chiefs to support youth initiatives like the Juju Scholarship Program, which provides scholarships to students facing economic hardship. So for your chance to win an unplugged Tesla Model S Plaid Apex Edition, just head to omaze.com slash electrified, linked below, and enter now. Donations will help to support the impactful work of the Juju Foundation. Best of luck. Interesting article here from Ars Technica talking about Tesla saving lives in more ways than one. First, some food for thought. They say, what if Tesla never existed or never sparked the EV revolution? Would we have millions of electric cars on the road today? They say, of course, the electric car revolution would have happened eventually. Personally, I'm not so sure. Then they quote Tesla's impact report, saying over the lifetime of a vehicle, the average emissions for a combustion car, 68 metric tons. Compare that to a Model 3, which will come in with lifetime emissions around 27 metric tons of carbon. So one to one, you have about 40 metric tons of carbon saved per vehicle over the lifetime. So let's just assume so far Tesla has sold 2 million cars times 40 metric tons saved. That would be 80 million metric tons saved by Tesla. Now, there was another study that said given that every 4,000 metric tons of carbon emitted is expected to cause one additional death per that study, that would yield 20,000 lives saved. And look, I understand these are very basic calculations and assumptions, however, the truth remains. And going further, if we include the 10 million electric cars sold by other companies, then lives saved jumps to a whopping 120,000. Personally, I've been very eager to hear about the fit and finish of the new Model Y coming out of Giga Austin, specifically when compared to Fremont. I desperately wanted to see Tesla improve here. So I've been paying attention and this user actually had a Model Y from Fremont recently that he gave back due to paint troubles. And so he ended up getting one from Giga Austin and he said it was much better, no panel gap issues, and he was pleased with the paint. Just one anecdote, but this seems to be the theme from the others that I've read so far. Just an FYI, Tesla just uploaded 10 new videos just going over the essentials for the new Model S and X. We get an interesting report from Electrek finally giving us an update on Tesla Solar and what's been going on. Today, Electrek learned Tesla had its best quarter since 2017 right after the acquisition of SolarCity, saying a source familiar with the matter confirmed Tesla deployed 71.5 megawatts of solar in the US residential solar market in Q 2022. Now that 71.5 megawatt number should be higher when Tesla releases its financial data in about two weeks. Remember, that's just United States and just residential. How would that compare? Looking at the last few quarters of Tesla Tesla's solar deployed, we're looking between 80 and 90 megawatts deployed, and in quarter one of this year, it was down to 48. So why the drop in Q1? Here's Zach Kirkhorn from Q1 this year. New import processes have impacted supply of certain components for our solar systems, which is reflected in our solar volume for the quarter. And later in the call, Elon said, we expect to address the part shortages that limited our progress with batteries and solar. So we expect batteries and solar to also grow well this year. Now with that context, we come back to Electrek. They said the solar roof product deployment is still disappointedly low. Electrek can confirm for the first time Tesla has deployed 2.5 megawatts of solar roofs during the second quarter quarter of this year. So doing some basic math, if you assume an average system size of eight kilowatts, 
That means Tesla was able to deploy solar roofs on about 300 houses in quarter two, or 23 roofs per week. This would be disappointedly low because Elon in the past has mentioned a goal of 1,000 solar roof deployments per week, so this would be well short of that figure. The issues with the rollout of the solar roof have been the same for some time. Elon himself said it's been about assessing the difficulty of certain roofs, and the complexity of roofs varies dramatically, making the actual installation very difficult from one house to another. Now, let's assume this report is true and once we add in commercial and non-United States deployments to that 71.5 megawatt figure, that it will end up being Tesla's best quarter in some time. Going back to the solar deployments the last few quarters, let's just be conservative and say it's 100 for simplicity's sake. So let's contextualize this a little bit. This is from Sunrun's Q1 Financials, one of the biggest American photovoltaic companies. They deployed 213 megawatts during quarter one for this year. So it's just one quarter, but if Tesla does end up doing around 100 megawatts of solar deployments this quarter, it would be roughly half of what Sunrun is doing. In case you're new, I think it's important to know that when it comes to Tesla solar panels, it's kind of a gray area and it's a pretty murky situation. But for right now, as far as I can tell, most residential solar panel installations done by Tesla use two models of Tesla branded solar panels, the H and the S series. Both of these models appear to be Q-Cells panels with Tesla branding on them. Thus, as far as I can tell, Tesla is not really manufacturing their own solar panels. However, they are indeed manufacturing the solar tiles. That little blurb was from Solar Reviews, but if any of you have more information, please definitely let me know below. Monroe uploaded another video about the Model Y. I'll link it below. Personally, I wasn't that excited by anything in it. Corey did mention Tesla's continual thirst for improvements, how they keep making small tweaks on things under the hood, but some of that stuff is beyond my pay grade, so I'll leave it down there for you if you're interested. From GM Authority, one day after Cruise received its permit, one of its autonomous vehicles was involved in a T-bone style crash that resulted in injuries to occupants of both vehicles. It's tough to tell who's at fault without an official crash report. Basically, the cruise was going eastbound making a left turn, another car was coming westbound making a right turn, but instead of apparently turning right, that car ended up going straight and kind of t-boned the cruise. A spokesperson declined to provide reasoning for why the cruise AV stopped in the intersection instead of continuing through it at a regular speed. GM would also not say whether the occupant of the cruise was one of its employees testing it or if it was a passenger. This from Yahoo Finance, there was a consumer report survey that was just released and 28% of adults, 8,027 were actually surveyed. 28% said they would not consider getting an electric only vehicle. The main concerns were price, range, and access to charging stations and they cited a lack of education around EVs, which is a theme we talk about often on the channel, how I wish Tesla would do more education, releasing content from that regard, teaching people about EVs. 61% of respondents said they were concerned with charging logistics, 55% said they'd worry about the number of miles it can go, range, and 52% cited the cost involved with buying, owning, and maintaining an EV. So guys, we have plenty of work to do here at Electrified and everybody else in the Tesla and EV community. VW has broken ground at one of its upcoming six new battery factories, announcing it's going to drop $20 billion on this endeavor and create an entirely new entity to handle all of the battery research and manufacturing. VW says this will create over 20,000 jobs and bring in around $20 billion in annual sales. I think that's a bit premature. However, they're creating this Power Co, which will manage VW's entire battery supply chain from R&D of new tech to the mining of the raw materials to end of life recycling. My guess would be that this mining here just refers to the contracts with mining companies, not necessarily that this new Power Co is going to actually do the mining itself, but that's just my assumption. VW says these plants will eventually have a production capacity of 240 gigawatt hours a year. Once again, I'll believe it when I see it because we have to figure out where these raw materials are going to come from. And this is a massive figure. Starting next year, VW said it's rolling out unified prismatic cell design of batteries that will be installed across the automaker's brands. And Bloomberg is reporting that VW has also indicated it's open to selling shares in the new business PowerCo after a period of financing it internally and inviting in strategic partners. 
they could facilitate a potential listing or an IPO next year or in 2024. And last up for today, we get a report from their Tagesspiegel saying that as of August this year, Tesla plans to give that 6% raise to 5,000 employees and that all production workers will get this 6% raise. Last we heard, Tesla had only hired around 4,500 employees, so this would imply that Tesla has indeed eclipsed that 5,000 employee mark if they're going to be paying that many people with a new raise. So hopefully we can track down some more accurate employment figures sometime soon. Don't forget, check out Omaze linked below. Please like the video if you did. Hope you guys have a wonderful day and a huge thank you to all of my Patreon supporters.